Hello, everyone. Um, we're here to talk about enterprise readiness of OpenStack. Um, and so I'd like to, to when thinking about uh, this presentation, I thought about um, you know, being an, uh, a father and having screaming children in the back of my car when we're on a road trip, arguing about all the, the problems and the frustrations that they're having in the back seat. Um, and we've been a, in a, on a long journey with OpenStack. I know it, it hasn't, it's only been five years, but it's felt like a long journey. And uh, there's been a lot of kind of perennial frustrations that we've been hearing from people who are adopting OpenStack. So um, we're kind of thinking about this in terms of sitting in, in the car um, with the kids yelling and screaming, are we there yet? Um, and so some of these questions that, that have been asked about OpenStack have included stuff like, it's impossible to deploy. It just doesn't work <laughs> at scale. You make a good kid. <laughs> Thanks. Upgrades are really painful. Uh, it's going to fail when I need it most. It takes an army, so many people, to operate. I can't even run my legacy workloads on this thing. Those are the type of things we hear from enterprise customers all the time. Um, and so we wanted to kind of introduce ourselves. I'm Kenny Johnston. I'm the, a product manager with uh, uh, the OSIC partnership between Rack, Rackspace and Intel. I work, my paycheck comes from Rackspace, but I'm an uh, OSICer through and through. Uh, Mike Apostle. I'm a director at the uh, OSIC Site Engineering in uh, San Antonio. Uh, I work at Intel, and I work directly on this uh, OpenStack Innovation Center and uh, work out of the Rackspace building. It's pretty cool. If you haven't been there, you got to check it out. So uh, a little bit about the OpenStack Innovation Center. Uh, th there's really three tenets, and, and maybe you've heard this, uh, but we'll repeat it. Uh, first, we're, we're inspiring the next generation of OpenStack developers. So we're mostly targeting upstream developers. Uh, we also have a significant amount of operations built into that. We think that's necessary for an understanding. But we've trained, I think it's over 200 people. Over 200, people. yeah. Yeah, and uh, we've also hired a bunch of people um, within Intel for, for OSIC. And then we work together uh, with Rackspace to make upstream contributions. Um, you want to hit on the uh, cluster? Yeah, we also, another component is the cluster. For those of you who attended the keynote um, when they were talking about the infra cloud being this massively multi-cloud distributed application, a significant portion of that, um, uh, the compute power needed to do that comes from the OSIC cluster that we donate, but it's also available for the community to use, whether that be a project team or an enterprise considering using OpenStack, they can get access to an OpenStack environment and an up-to-date OpenStack environment or bare metal resources to test and deploy OpenStack on their own. So check out OSIC.org if you're um, interested in getting access to some of those resources. Yeah, it's a really cool option. Uh, and then finally, uh, with that, with those people we've trained and along with uh, the Rackspace uh, experts, we are doing a lot within the community um, with 100% upstream contributions across many, different, many of the different projects. So. Yeah, and we should say, you know, that that target for us is really enterprise readiness. It's solving yep. this problem of are we there yet? The frustrations that we hear continually from enterprises who um, have considered uh, using OpenStack and, and uh, walked away, tried it and failed, or tried it and are just um, really frustrated and struggling to gain adoption within their organization. Um, so we wanted to kind of go one by one through these uh, kid complaints. The first one being it's impossible to deploy. So we're, we're, as we talk about these, there's going to be some where we think, you know, this, there's been some history here. This is kind of a, um, a solved thing. We think there's less pain point here in, in terms of enterprise readiness. Like, we think that's a green check. But there are going to be others where, where uh, it's less so, and there's more work to be done. And there's others where, frankly, there's, we, we fully acknowledge that pain point is still there. Um, so impossible to deploy. Um, some of the history here, for those who have been around OpenStack for a while, uh, it used to be that there was little in the way of uh, deployment tooling. It was a bunch of projects. You had to go kind of assemble them all yourself. The um, analogy that's been thrown around within the community is that OpenStack was kind of like a bunch of Legos, a room full of Legos, and you were told to walk into there and build the Millennium Falcon or some complex Lego structure, a castle, um, without any instruction guide. Um, and that, that, uh, that history is actually far past us now. There's a series of deployment tools available, whether they're from specific vendors um, or OpenStack projects that, are, that enable you to um, do deployments that are very robust. You know, I, like, I think anyone considering um, deploying OpenStack by hand should first take a look at the deployment tools available in, in your preferred orchestration languages, whether that be Salt, Puppet, Chef, Ansible, 
Um, there are all sorts of methods for deploying OpenStack. Sometimes it can be confusing because there's so many and it's hard to choose which one, um, but there are lots of ways to deploy OpenStack where you don't have to get into the nitty gritty of deploying each and every individual service. Mike, do you want to kind of talk about what OSIC's yeah, so been doing? Yeah, in OSIC, I really like the, the Lego analogy. So you got to have that guide in order to build the right thing, right? So, so we continue to focus on the install guide um, within that. And, you know, there's several different things we're doing there that we'll talk about, but um, really to help uh, operators choose the right tool for their deployment. Um, and then we also have, uh, we did a lot of work uh, in the configuration process, really centralizing those um, with the community. When I say we, I mean us, the community, all of us. Uh, but really centralizing those, so it's really easy to see, is this an advanced option? Is this a um, standard option? So if it's my first deployment, maybe I stay away from those advanced options. Um, and then a feature classification matrix, you know, to better understand each of the features when you're deploying, how will this impact uh, specific areas within your cloud? Um, and then finally, uh, we did this uh, novice install, which is something that we've done, uh, I, I think, I was listening to Melvin, um, yesterday, I think we were at eight cycles of this now, um, where we have novice installers, people who are very new to OpenStack. Here's the install guide, go build a cloud. Uh, the first one took 40 hours, um, and through the iterations and the improvements within that install guide, um, the, the most recent one was at six hours. So I think it's an 85% uh, reduction. So some really good stuff in there. Um, yeah, did you yeah, have anything And I think on the install guide, it's important to point out that uh, or the novice install. We're talking about from bare metal, I just yeah, have machines in, uh, racked and cabled in my data center to deployed OpenStack. So that includes provisioning the host OS, preparing the networking, deploying OpenStack. Now I have full horizon run the, run the Tempest test to verify. Um, and that's, that's pretty impressive, to be honest. Um, and it's been a lot of work. It, it kind of, we try to take a kind of UX bent to that, where we're saying, what is the experience of an operator here? I mean, where can we solve the pain points? Um, so we've, we've put a lot into the deployment thing. Again, if I'm, if I'm grading this one, um, I, I yell at the kids and say, stop complaining. This is, this is a largely solved thing that um, there are lots of tools available to help you. Uh, the next one is, d does it work at, it doesn't work at scale. Um, the history here has been kind of interesting. There were times maybe two years ago where people would say, um, the control plane of OpenStack just can't scale beyond 200 nodes. Um, you'd hear about things like RabbitMQ not scaling, um, whether that be the database not being able to scale to the size needed for uh, large cluster deployments. Um, so in, in that time, the community has responded. All, all of these deployment projects I've talked about have um, very scalable control planes. Many, if not most of them, have been proven at 500 plus uh, scale. And so we think that, again, if, you're, if you'd considered OpenStack in the past and thought, well, it doesn't meet my scale requirements. Um, we think we're, we're in that range where a standard enterprise you know, is probably 500, 500 to 1,000 um, nodes is, a, is a, an uh, aspirational scale that I think anyone would want to know that, yes, if I deploy this thing, it can get there, um, that we're, we're largely in that space. And part of that is also a lot of validation that the OSIC team has been doing. Yeah, and, and we're really seeking some proof points as well, right? When you talk about validation, I'll just add uh, before we go to that, but if you look, the OSIC cluster that we talked about did scale to 1,000 nodes using OpenStack. Um, and then in the testing, so within OSIC, and we're also seeking additional support, we're doing a lot of testing around scale. Where are things failing? What do we find? Where do things break? Um, and then also uh, doing some upstream contributions around scale, whether that's cells or uh, regions or uh, federation. Yeah, and, and for those of you who don't know, those are all three methods um, within the community to scale OpenStack. You can scale out with cells or scale out with regions or scale out with federation. Another thing we're working on is um, providing more robust guides for when to use which option um, and what are the kind of best practices for using which option. So that's future work that the OSIC team is doing around kind of continuing to push uh, the scale boundaries of OpenStack. And, and I should point out, you know, like, uh, not just OSIC, you heard a stream of, uh, of um, presenters in summit sessions or in the uh, keynotes talking about yeah. OpenStack at truly massive scale, like far more than 1,000. Um, some of that is not really easily enterprise deployable, um, but, but much of it, and, and we've tested 2,000 nodes, is, is very easily deployable. Uh, the next one is upgrades are painful. This is a picture of an asphalt machine repaving a road. The, the old pain point used to be 
Uh, essentially, if you wanted to upgrade OpenStack in the earlier releases, you had to repave your entire environment. Um, I, I can speak from my company's experience that we would, we would have to ask customers to migrate entire workloads to a new cloud, uh, uh, decommission an entire environment, and just move to a whole new set of, of physical infrastructure in those days. Um, that seemed crazy, obviously. That is not a recipe for success in uh, any piece of software. It is also, uh, I think, in our, in our belief, kind of an existential threat to OpenStack itself, where the community and, and what all these developers are working on is about bringing innovation and newness and um, updating a piece of software. Uh, and if, you're, if you look at the people who are using your software and realize that they are, they're scared or have too much pain or are incapable of getting to that newest release, all that is, is for naught. And we saw this in things like the user survey. You would see long tails of people, um, you know, sometimes nine to 12 month windows before people adopted new releases. Um, and long tails of people still on, on earlier releases. We're starting to see improvement in that. If you look at more recent user surveys, the, 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 it's a stacked rank graph, and this graph has been slowly moving uh, towards the right. Um, and so part of that was, was efforts by individual project teams. It was largely on each individual service to improve the, the way they architected their service so that uh, upgrades were less painful. Um, the community has, has gone about kind of organizing this effort through something called tags. And if you're not familiar with um, a web page on OpenStack.org called the Project Navigator, it's a way to view these tags. It's a way to look at a project like Nova or Manila or Ironic and say, um, what does this project do? And then information about that project, some of which are about their attributes. So some, one of the tags is um, supports non-destructive upgrades. Another one is supports um, rolling upgrades, and there's a new tag about zero downtime upgrades that Mike will talk about. But the community has responded, um, I think, pretty robustly. We have a lot of projects that have, um, you know, one of the first to get uh, rolling upgrade status was Swift, and, and Nova was right there behind them. Um, but we've now seen a number of other projects uh, fall down this path. So we're, we're improving upgrades significantly, and, and newer versions of OpenStack, you can be rest assured that while there might still be some downtime in uh, a couple of core services, the vast majority of your control plane is going to remain online during an upgrade, and it will be far less painful than some of the horror stories you might have heard about in the past. And Mike can talk about the work we've been doing in OSIC around upgrades. Yeah, in OSIC, we've really focused, uh, you mentioned Nova and Swift. Uh, we've really focused as well on Keystone, Glance, uh, Cinder, Neutron. Um, and, and really making sure that those can get to that status as well. All of those now do non-destructive upgrades, which you were hitting on. Um, but from a rolling upgrade perspective, um, I know we're uh, actually focusing a lot in Neutron now, um, and there's a, there's a big effort there. Also, when we talk about zero downtime, that's different than the rolling upgrade tag. You know, in the rolling upgrade, I don't want to get too far into the definition, but you know, you know, basically, you could have a small bit of downtime as you go from one service to another service, and they're running at the same time. We're trying to get to zero, where we don't have that interruption at all. Uh, so we want to continue to push that upgrades. I believe with you that uh, you know that this is a detrimental thing to OpenStack, and I'm glad the community is focused on it, and we're glad to be able to help there as well. Yeah. Uh, so it will fail when I need it most. This is really about um, control plane reliability. Um, if you think about the promise of OpenStack and anyone moving from a more traditional infrastructure platform to a cloud infrastructure platform like OpenStack, um, it, you have to have a mental shift uh, in this same analogy of cattles and pets, who are, for those who are familiar. But you have to have a mental shift from, I um, am relying on my infrastructure to be reliable, my data plane to be reliable, um, to now I have to rely on my control plane. My ability to um, provision a new virtual machine is what makes my application reliable, right? Because my application is um, handling that reliability and able to provision new infrastructure if something were to go wrong. Um, so my application in a cloud, putting in a cloud application on an infrastructure platform, my, my application can no longer scale or remain reliable uh, if the control plane is not available. So we're really talking about the reliability of the OpenStack control plane. And at first, um, it, it wasn't that reliable. Again, thinking about some of these um, issues with, uh, the, with RabbitMQ or other services failing um, and hosts going down. Um, and so, again, this is one that I think is kind of a green check. The response has been, if you look at any of these deployment projects available in OpenStack, they all deploy 
um, an HA control plane. Um, most of them deploy into some sort of container structure, so you have um, the ability to uh, share control plane nodes with services and have some isolation so there's less uh, interruption or inter-service conflict that might cause reliability issues. Um, but those are the kinds of innovations that the, the um, community has responded with. And, and again, I think you can, you can look at almost any one of those control, the deployment processes and deployment services and be rest assured that it's going to de deploy a reliable OpenStack control plane for you. And, and where we know there's failures, that's again where OSIC is focusing at this point more from a testing perspective. Understand those upstream findings, upstream bugs, uh, and go from there. Yeah, and so we're, one of the specific things around failure testing that we're doing is building a third-party CI to test um, that when you deploy OpenStack, it can respond to specific failure events, whether that might be high IO traffic on your control nodes or an entire control node going down or a specific service failing on your, one of your control, uh, control plane instances. So um, that's, that's the kind of thing where we're taking it to the next step to not just say we're comfortable that all of these tools do it, but that there's actually mechanisms to put that uh, into the CI CD process. So we're gating and making sure that we don't have any regression on any new code that would prohibit you um, from maintaining that reliability under certain failure scenarios. Uh, it takes an army to operate. The, for those, it might be hard to read, but the letters on this keyboard say quit now. Um, we often hear from people who um, are considering uh, adding OpenStack to their suite of enterprise infrastructure platforms um, that they're scared that they're going to lose their weekends, that they're going to be on call 24-7, that they're going to get the, the pager duty call at 2 a.m. Um, and have to respond to this thing that, you know, they're just not comfortable that it will operate long term. And some of that um, has, I, th I think, has to do with the fact that it's new, but it also has to do with the fact that unlike probably other infrastructure platforms you've run in, a, in an enterprise environment, there's not a great set of operator tooling here, right? It, um, a, lot of it is, um, a lot of it is the just kind of hack at it and make it work type things. If you think about other tools you've used, I'm sure you know there's really robust GUIs that help you operate this thing. Um, and one of the key metrics that we look at when we talk to, to customers and users about this is what is, they think about it in terms of VM to operator ratio. How many operators do I have to have if I have a you know, 10,000, 20,000 VM deployment? Um, and in OpenStack, that, that ratio is not that great today, to be completely frank. This is one of those ones that I, I think we all have some concern about. Um, there is no great cloud modeled um, uh, open sourced tool to go use to, to do operations on OpenStack that's, that's OpenStack native that kind of takes into account the cloud mental model. Um, there are some fledgling initiatives um, in various parts of the community that are, I don't think any of them would admit that they're fully there and, and robust and reliable for operator deployments. And of course, there are a lot of downstream initiatives. So there's lots of the, the vendors. And if you work with a managed service provider or, or a distribution vendor, many of them have their own tools that, that do provide this kind of robust capability. But as a, a as an upstream-focused organization in OSIC, um, we would really also like there to be um, this kind of tooling in the community, and um, it's something that we've kind of put the challenge out to the community to, to see if they can come up with. Uh, the last one is, I can't I run. I can't run my legacy workflow. I can't workflow. do it. Um, uh, this is, you know, this is the perennial pets versus cattle problem, right? Um, in the OpenStack sense, though, it wasn't really about, um, just pets versus cattle in the beginning. We were talking about you know, sub 90% um, data plane reliability reported from some operators. And this is, again, years ago. Um, but the approach that I think the community has taken has been um, really spot on. They've, they basically responded and said, we want to get availability um, in an environment. We want to make sure that the bugs are fixed to the point, to the point that um, no longer are operator-induced um, failures requiring VM down, downtime. So if you think about that, um, if you're operating a fleet of OpenStack, uh, you might have to do a zero-day patch on a security vulnerability. That would require you to potentially reboot every single compute host in your environment. Should that mean that every single VM um, and every single cloud-native application has to respond to a VM failure and spin up, spin up new VMs? Um, that seems a little bit onerous to the applications looking for reliability. So one of the things that we've seen a response is, let's try to limit the, to 
increase VM availability to the point where um, it can survive operator-induced failure. Um, and really the secret sauce that we in, we in OSIC and Rackspace and Intel have both been contributing to um, is improving live migrate. If you have really um, good success rate and a good deployment architecture for live migrate, um, you, can, you can get around some of those operator-induced problems. Yeah, I mean, you, you hit on the, the live migrate, the operator induced, and then, you know, kind of next level is really to detect when that failure is happening um, and then go, go fix that on the fly, right? So we want to get into that space um, with the community as well, and so we're kicking off some efforts there and also part of the uh, continuing ones within the community. Yeah. So. And again, I know there are, <coughs> there are uh, there's lots of conflict about how reliable should OpenStack be. What is it, should it be pet ready? Um, and frankly, I, I think what we're, the position we're taking is um, it, should, it should be as reliable as we can easily make it um, with operator tooling, right? <clears throat> if you know that a node in your environment um, has a problem or is, is about to fail, you should be able to detect that and migrate workloads off as opposed to just immediately destroying it um, in your environment. So that's kind of the mental model that we're taking there. <coughs> Sorry. So just to wrap up. Um, well, I'm just looking at our enormous uh, traffic signal yeah. there. Um, it's, it's a little confusing. Uh, but, you know, I, I think uh, Kenny hit on each of these items as we went. But, you know, we're, we're kind of given a, a green in the deploy space. Uh, yep. Really, there are several tools to choose from. You know, we talked about improving that install guide, and there, there's still more to do here. Uh, but we gave that one a green. Um, in scale, uh, yeah, there's there's been efforts, and we've definitely seen, um, you know, improvements here, and we've seen, you know, our cluster get to a thousand nodes, and there were other success stories that we talked about. Um, but there's more that needs to come. So we gave this one a yellow. Kids are kids are right here. Um, I don't know if you want to add more. Uh, Kenny, I know you're getting a drink. Yeah, thanks for talking all this time. But. Um, yeah, and I think on upgrades, we we okay. want to we want to communicate that upgrades are uh, far less onerous than they have been in the past, but there's still work to do. Yeah, and and then uh, in reliability, yeah, there's there's multiple tools um, in that space. Uh, we talked about that one quite a bit. Operations, yeah, that that one's definitely that one's definitely red. The the providers provide that. Right, and that's where you're really going to get that uh, support, or you have your own tools. Um, and then finally, in pet ready, we just talked about that one, um, and the uh, live migration, and then the auto migration. So, you know, from our perspective, that's that's the score um, that we we gave on those six different items of the kids screaming in the back. Right. Um, but you know, there's some real reality here. But then we also want to show there should be some confidence. Um, as well um, in several of these areas and significant improvements coming as well. Yeah, we've made a lot of progress. There's been a kind of history of fear or doubt about um, OpenStack's enterprise readiness. We think you know, there's been a lot of analysts' research about OpenStack being ready. It's obviously being adopted by enterprises all around the world. There are still pain points, um, but we think that um, we're on a great path to solve them and through the community and with OSIC's help, um, we're going to get there shortly. So. Questions. That's all we had. We're well, happy yeah. to take questions from anyone. Looks like we have a mic, but I don't know if you have to walk all the way up here to use it. Go ahead. Yeah, that's a... No, there are. Uh, and so, yeah, let me tackle that one <coughs> and repeat the question. So the question was, when we talk about scale, we kind of put the, the boundaries at 500 to 1,000, but obviously, are there, aren't there people who want more than that? Is that really where we want to end scale? Um, you know, I think of, uh, I'm kind of limiting myself to the enterprise use case, which um, 
again, like there are certainly vast enterprises like we've heard keynotes from Walmart and, and others that are using this at, at very massive scale. Um, but I think of a typical enterprise workload to be in that range. I, I don't, like Rackspace, obviously, we have a public cloud that is many X that range. Um, but I think we were trying to target uh, a barrier to adoption for enterprises today was that it wouldn't reach that scale. I think if you think about the broader market of enterprise use of OpenStack, that's really the sweet spot that we wanted to target, was making sure we could hit that scale. <coughs> Sorry. I have a bug in my throat, but um, I don't disagree. And uh, Cells is out. Um, my understanding is that Cells, multi-Cells is in Newton, so it is complete. Um, but we, we frankly haven't seen a lot of people use it, and within OSIC we haven't really tested it. But that's one of the things that we will be doing is testing the different methods of scale, including regions, cells, and federation. Does that answer your question? That's a really good point, and just to read back for the recording, but the, the point was made that uh, compared to other enterprise software available, OpenStack does scale far beyond what there, some, many of those capabilities are, and we should, not that we should be satisfied with that, but we should be, um, we, yeah, we shouldn't be so concerned about scale if we're already kind of surpassed some of these other scale metrics. Any other questions? Thank you, guys. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate you coming.